Makoto. Listen. However... Oh, 
Since this will be the final class trial, I've come up with a special rule. So listen up! If you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school, you guys win! But if you can't, then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super heart-pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep, sure will! And that's final? No loopholes? No wiggling out of it later? Of course not! Bears never go back on their word! Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me! I'm right, aren't I? I knew it! You guys have all been working together, haven't you? I have evidence, so I know I'm right! Hey, you stole my line! You're all out to get me! I'm sure of it! I have evidence of my own! What a coincidence! I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. W what Wait, hold on! This doesn't make any sense! How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? No, it's wrong! It's not just you three. I have evidence too. 
What? You too? The evidence you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Well, well, yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. With the picture you have, I'm in it. But that can't be right. Because in my picture... See? I'm the only one not in it. Hero, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. So the secret in these pictures... Mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? the picture is the person who received it. So, in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, she's the only one missing. And in the picture Hero got, he's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. In other words, Monokuma gave each of us a group photo in which that person wasn't included. And when we each saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind.
Can you just forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo? I'm still pissed about that. to make it look like we were wearing matching uniforms. Hmm? So you think they're fake? <laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. But what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah, I don't remember ever taking a picture like that. So it's got to be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong, I don't remember taking this picture either, but is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? say that somehow we'd all lost our memories that could explain it couldn't it oh I get it so we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo makes sense as if you expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult type story yeah. we all lost our memories that's just crazy Spontaneous amnesia? Since when did this turn into some kind of sci-fi fantasy? I promise you, I haven't lost my memory. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. No, it's wrong. Those photos aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. This DVD does the same thing. You're not gonna show us something indecent, are you? N no, it's nothing like that. 
It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us, including you. You lie! I never did any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time, and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me. I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? I don't know. I don't remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever. Or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true! What? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... I really... Yep! You all totally lost your memory at the same time! This is all... making my head hurt. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. How could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains?
would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you. The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. You mean the motive you came up with? To try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else? did it is the same one who's behind everything. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. Shoot! So who did it? Whoever did it is this that much I will win you is the mastermind. Of course, they have to be. What makes you so sure? Um, what does make me so sure? Exactly. You're just making stuff up. There's no way the mastermind is here. The mastermind is probably a million miles away. No, it's wrong. There's no question that the Mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The Mastermind must have been using that to control it all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The Mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the Mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. So if the Mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the Mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed. Oh, I get it. The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? Aw, oh, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. 
Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. We figured that out. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. doesn't make any sense because because she had all those wounds before she ever came here huh how do you know that isn't it obvious she was the ultimate soldier right so that means you know you're wrong <laughs> she denied me <laughs> before i could even say anything <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I mean, you think I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me!
Nukuro was the ultimate soldier. She must have been in a hundred different battles. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wounds in battle. Are you finished? You didn't deny me this time, did you? <sighs> you made me go all cutesy. Don't worry, there wasn't anything cute about it. Mukuro was the ultimate. She must have been so obviously. She got all those wounds and... No, it's wrong. No, Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. Don't uh, be denied so completely. Actually, it's kind of refreshing. Oh, maybe it's because of all of Master's training. Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed her. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. But if that's what killed her... Then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter of what happened last night? Makoto, you said you were attacked in your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several days, certainly it couldn't have been her. So who was it that attacked you? who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me. But I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise?
You never saw their face, right? So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Motoro Ikusaba! Shoot! You never saw there, so you can't have... I'm telling you now, it was... You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, there is another part of the attacker we can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? What is this other part? Is it the right hand? Shoot! You never saw this, so you can't have... I'm telling you now, you're wrong. There's another part of the... Oh? Is it the... Or the left? Maybe the... Or perhaps... Or could it be... The hip? You never saw it, so you can't have... I'm telling you now! It was Mokuro Ikusaba! You're wrong. There's another part of the... Oh? Is it the... Right hand? Or the left hand? No, it's wrong. Mukuro had a tattoo on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. And there was no such tattoo. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah! We were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. could have been her. Uh-oh! No snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. My scars should suffice as proof. Makoto, 
Did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Uh, sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet. Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain! Then, she was being stored somewhere? But... To hide a body here... To just store it somewhere? John! Mukuro's body was probably kept hidden in the bio lab. Bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? That's right. It's actually set up for use as a moor. So it's the perfect place to hide a body. And it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. so sure the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden is the tarp that we found in the garden when I was checking it over again I noticed something I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp oh it says bio lab holy cow how'd you notice that tiny little thing Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have surfaced with perfect timing. This proves that the tarp originally came from the bio lab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers and put the coat on it afterwards. You made everything sound so amazingly consistent. 
<laughs> That's just a wild guess! Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency, one so major it can't be overlooked. La la la, I can't hear you, la 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 la. Such a child. Oh well, just ignore him. By the way, Makoto, what about that one thing? What one thing? <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. So what do you think? Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that! Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! I'm not listening! I refuse to give up yet! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! What? What do you want? Are you sure about this? That's impossible! Are you sure about this? That's impossible! I'm not listening! This should prove it! The inconsistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights! <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the bio lab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, 
a giant refrigerator was installed in there. That's where everyone who's died is stored. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on, including the one Mukuro was in. And there were only nine. Why does that matter? You gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. I got it! Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's died here so far, and it should become clear. should make you immediately suspicious. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. You're saying a dead body just up and disappeared? I got it! The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body since they actually killed her. And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappeared. But if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's execution, there have apparently been ten deaths, but there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? was killed twice. Huh? Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far. But one of the victims may have been murdered, and then murdered again. Murdered and... murdered again? If that's the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Technically, you're right, I guess. Something like that could easily have happened. No, it is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio lab until the moment we found it in the garden. No, no, that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious! Because 
Mickey Yoko's totally delusional. Who is this someone else that Mukuro was killed at? Was it Sayaka Maizono? Junko Enoshima? Leon Kuwata? Shoot! Who is this sub? Was it Junko, Leon, Chihiro, Mondo, Kiyotaki, Fumi, Celestial, or maybe... No, there's no way anyone was murdered twice! Who is this sub? Was it Junko Enoshima? Leon, Chihiro, Mondo, Kiyotaki, Fumi, Celestial, or maybe... No. No, no. There's no way anyone was murdered. No, it's wrong. Junko. Wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... And the similarities match? Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one and the same. So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be these same injuries. And it's really true? Mukuro and Junko are the same person? Wait, so then... What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine.
also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the Mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive. She took Yuko's body and made it look like she was the one who died. So Mukuro is still alive. found in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was five foot six inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But if Mukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Here's my answer. Junko is still alive. It's the only possibility. Are you sure about that? Huh? I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. But we saw her get impaled. 
she died right before our very eyes. If Junko were still alive, the death we saw would have had to have been some kind of charade. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? No question, Junko was dead. So, the idea that she's still alive... It must be wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. <laughs> too bad, too bad. This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. kind of survivor story I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction huh? the opposite direction let's assume Junko is still alive if so how could she have survived
I refuse to give up yet! Now I understand. That's it. What if she switched places with someone else? Switch places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Then that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switch? When could they even have done that? Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. Maybe the whole idea is wrong. I got it! Two of them may have switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Yes, from the moment we first met. If that's when they switch... ...then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? After all, the one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. Uh, hold on. So, you're saying the Junko we first met actually Mukuro all along? Um, we'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And we never would have known the difference. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? She could have hidden it with foundation or something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion. Exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body.
they were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. What's wrong? Lost the will to fight back? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity. When did I do that? Shoot! 
Refuse to give up yet. While I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the Headmaster, sure I couldn't finish watching the video and the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko did you oh yeah if everyone was in that video of course Junko would have had to show up and if Makoto saw the real Junko it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter power outage thing was just a fluke! Thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago when we were all comparing the photos we got. 
between all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. What's so unusual about them? A gun! Junko's face. The one thing common to every... to believe her face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. With all that in mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. Which is why you had to have pictures that didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed... ...that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. Xanadu! I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. She's the true mastermind and the ultimate despair. Xanadu times two! With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No! Oh, wait! Hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to run. I'll prove everything. Right now!
Fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusawa. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue, until Junko decided to put her body to use. Junko dragged the body out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden. She fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko, who proven to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. So she put on a mask and then attacked. After making sure I'd gotten a good look at the mask, she left the room. Then she put the same mask on Mukuro's body. This was all to make us think the person who attacked me and the corpse were one and the same. She wanted us to believe the murder had only recently taken place. Finally, by strapping a bomb to the body, she was able to destroy any remaining evidence. She needed to hide the body's true identity. She had to make sure we didn't find out it was actually the same person we'd met in the beginning. This is the truth behind Mukuro's murder. And the one who carried it all out is the true mastermind. The one controlling Monokuma. The real Junko and Oshima! whole story behind this incident. Well, what do you have to say to that? What? Are you broken again? You can't get out of this, so don't even try. Come on! It's time you finally revealed yourself! It's not like you're an endangered species or something. How long do you plan to keep hiding? Give it up, Junko. The game's over. Over? <laughs> Did 
Did you really think this story would end once we reach the climax of the case? Wrong! There's still plenty more to go! Waiting! Waiting so very long for peasants like you to appear! If you swear your fealty to us, we will reward you with half of the entire world! We've even drawn up the deed already! We will grant you honor, status, and some of our home cooking! Have you made your choice? Will you serve under us? Oh, did you think I was being serious? Sorry. I was just messing with you. It's been so long since I've had an audience. Even I'm not sure what kind of role I'm supposed to play. Anyway, looks like I've finally been set free. Having to play Monokuma all the time, day after day. It was like I was stuck in purgatory. Or, like a slow suicide. I get bored so easy, you know? Face! Huh? What about my face? What's wrong with my beautiful face? People have told me I'm cuter than a hundred chihuahuas combined. I feel like... this isn't the first time I've seen you. seeing a magazine cover. And you were on it. Wow, you have a pretty good memory. I guess that's why you've made it this far, huh? So I was right. Then what you told me in the main hall when this all began... Sometimes a little lie is necessary to keep things moving along. Wouldn't you agree? That explains why she didn't quite seem the same. Because she was a different person all along. I'm me. And Mukuro is Mukuro. She tried her best. But there's just no way she could have passed as the ultimate fashionista. Two people can never become one as long as the walls of mind and body exist. Not even if they're twins. Twins! I know, it's such a cliche, right? I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. So basically, Mukuro and I had your stereotypical twin relationship. The older sister, tough and proud. That was Mukuro. Younger sister, smart and cute. That was... <laughs> Me, Junko fucking Anishima! And together, we were the Despair Sisters, AKA the Ultimate Despair! Whoa! She's a totally different person now! Like I said, I get bored easy as hell! I even get fucking bored with myself! But if, if you're twins, why do you have different last names? Oh, that again? You have any idea how many times people ask me that shit? Maybe it's new to your dumb ass, but it pours me to tears. And 
answering the same questions over and over? Just make up whatever answer you want. I don't give a shit. The truth's fucking lame anyway. But if she was your twin, that means you killed your own sister? And for reasons deeper and darker than the ocean. Ha! As if! Well, I suppose I'd better explain. For my plan to work, someone had to be able to control the killing game from behind the scenes. The so-called mastermind had to operate Monokuma, keep an eye on everyone, things like that. But after looking at the situation, I determined it would be impossible for Mukuro to perform such duties. Because naturally, she turned out to be the letdown of the family. Leaving me behind to run off and join some band of mercenaries. Such a disappointment. So, I decided to play the role of director and have her join the rest of you in your school life. I could have let her work alongside me, but she would have been useless to me that way. Besides, 15 students seemed like a solid number to start with. Of course, the fact that she was the ultimate soldier posed something of a problem. She had what I call the three atrocities. Atrociously rank, atrociously filthy, atrociously repulsive. It was atrociously clear just how out of touch she was with the rest of society. Meanwhile, my ultimate fashionista status has an undeniable appeal that I didn't want to go to waste. And that's... Why you switched identities? Sadly, her inability to match my personality was even greater than I'd calculated. It was a lost cause. She was nothing more than a bit player, an extra unworthy of lines. Being the utter disappointment that she was, anyone would have expected her to get killed off right away. Which is precisely why I killed her, to meet everyone's expectations. Can't be your only reason, can it? Well, no, of course not. I also did it to avoid becoming bored. I've never been a stickler for following a plan to the letter, you know? If I planned everything out and knew just what was gonna happen, that'd be so boring. So, I changed things just a bit and decided to use Mukuro to make a little point. In other words, Mukuro's death was a one-sided, premeditated act of betrayal. Just as I suspected. When Mukuro was killed, she must have been as surprised as anybody else. <laughs> so, you figured it out? Well, you're right! There's no way Mukuro could have pulled off such a convincing performance. But she did teach you all a very valuable lesson, don't you think? How can you talk like that? You sacrificed your own sister! How does that not even bother you? What? I sacrificed her? That's what's got you so hot under the collar? Please. Misunderstandings sure are scary. We were the ultimate despair, you know? So we never had any kind of hope or expectations. Nope. I felt despair as long as I can remember. Like I never should have been born at all. When I was born, I cried tears of total despair. So that's why for us, it's not a big deal whether we die or kill. We're just those kinds of people. We can do anything. We've always been filled with despair, so when we do something, we go all the way and live without regret! So you just murdered your own sister and didn't think anything of it? That's not true at all. We were twins. How could I not be sad? That's why it gets me so... excited. Huh? Killing my precious sister with my own two hands. That act is filled with so much despair. You can't help but put a super in front of it. It's like 
Super, 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 super despair. No, more than that. Super, 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 super despair. It just feels so good. What the hell is wrong with you? And my sister, too. In that moment of death, I think she must have felt that despair. After all, to be murdered by your own sister, and only as an example to someone else, she must have died feeling such excruciating hopelessness. I'm so jealous of her. Super jealous. I knew you couldn't be just some ordinary person. You're some kind of abnormality. Turning your own despair into some kind of fetish. Abnormality doesn't even begin to describe it. Like, Genocide Jill is crazy for sure, but this is a whole nother level of nuts! You're saying I don't compare to some lowly beast that can only kill the weak, right? So, I'm hopelessly attractive, hopelessly brilliant, hopelessly athletic. I'm the hopelessly perfect ultimate human. No, I don't think there's anything perfect about anything you just said. Yeah, Master's way more perfect, because on top of everything else, he's got that noble blood. Hmm. Don't you mean, had that noble blood? What did you just say? What do you mean by that? <laughs> you still haven't figured that part out yet? Man, you guys are so slow! You haven't even solved all the mysteries, and yet here you are, yap, yap, yapping away! Are you talking about our memories? You've already solved this mystery, right? I'm the killer! So how about the next one? Maybe you should solve the riddle of your missing memories. Then you can start floating! Damn straight! That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to solve all these mysteries. And then we'll have our victory! <laughs> All right, then let's just get straight to the point. What memories did you steal from us? When the group pictures were taken, and those interviews, it must mean... I got it! It must have something to do with our entrance exams. Don't care! At least give us a hint! Your brains are like sponges, all drippy and leaky. I already gave you a hint before. All the memories you lost share something in common with a few other things. Do you recall? Talking about the motives you provided to try and get us to kill each other, right? So you do remember after all. Well, I would hope you wouldn't forget something so important. It was stupid of me to even ask. I apologize from the bottom of my heart for my bad manners. So then, let me ask you another question. Did you notice that each motive I presented to you had a specific theme to it? Theme? Yep, you got it. So that's my question to you all. When Sayaka was murdered, what was the theme of the motive I presented?
The driving force behind the motive you presented us with at that point was human connections. Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Remember those DVDs I gave you guys? Each video showed the total destruction of your most important relationships. For example, your family. For example, your friends. I ruined all those relationships and showed you the results. It was to motivate your desire to escape and kickstart your urge to kill. But still, what a cruel thing to do. You're the one that did it! Yes, well, I'm perfectly happy to accept your disapproval. Okay! Time for the next question! Um, so, what was the theme for the second motive? was our past, right? Yay! Makoto got it right again! That time, the theme was... Embarrassing memories and secrets! Yeah! <laughs> and the whole reason Mondo did what he did was to protect his secret. So, how long do you plan on dragging this out? So, what was the motive for the third murder? I got it! It was money, wasn't it? Greed. Seek and destroy! Hell yeah, you got it again! Goddamn straight it was money! Celeste killed Hifumi and Taka for a little personal gain! Her greed led to all kinds of death and destruction! What's the point of all this? Why are you making us go through this case by case? <laughs> Don't worry, sweet cheeks. Just one more to go. Now, can you tell me the motive behind crazy ass Sakura's crazy ass death? It was betrayal. Precisely. You see... Once I revealed Sakura's betrayal, that led to everything that came afterwards. Anyway, it looks like you answered all of my questions correctly. How painfully delightful. But what's the point? What meaning is there in asking those questions now? Relationships? Secrets? Money? Betrayal? These are all pretty standard motives, right? The most normal of normal. Totally middle of the road. But of course, those aren't the only motives that exist in this world. In fact, there are as many reasons to kill as there are people on Earth. They compel humans to kill each other, bringing despair to the world. This is what we refer to as the Seed of Despair. Seed of Despair? Just as water, air, and food promote growth in living things, the Seed of Despair also needs nourishment. And that nourishment is hope. Despair can grow only in the presence of hope. Two sides of the same coin, divided by a razor-thin line. Such is hope and despair. How much longer is this stupid speech of yours? Weren't we discussing our missing memories? Why are you trying to change the subject? If you would listen, you would see I'm not changing the subject. 
We are discussing your memories. What I'm trying to say is, the seed of despair is closely tied to your own memories. H how so? You see, by taking away your memories, I gave you hope. Of course that hope merely existed to be consumed by despair. How could taking away someone's memories give them hope? And plus, you haven't given us any hope anyway! Is that so? All you've been able to think about during your time here is how to escape, right? The mere fact that that's what you want proves I gave you hope. What are you talking about? If none of you wanted to escape this school, the killings never would have taken place. That is why we took your memories. So that you would have the desire to leave. The only reason we want to leave is because you took our memories. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Correct the mundo! Which means if we did have our memories, then we wouldn't want to leave. Do I understand that right? What? Why the hell would having our memories make us not want to leave? <laughs> a most troubling thought, isn't it? But it's not enough. I want more distress, more despair. I put so much effort into creating hope in order to feed your despair and make it grow. So, just like Crazy Eddie slashing his prices and passing the savings on to you, let me give you a hint. Huh? Really? Then hurry up and tell us. Okie dokie, like they say, seeing is believing! I'd like for you to see the outside world! You mean the world beyond the school walls? So something really did happen out there. Now are you interested in what I have to say? You wanna see what's out there? Hoo 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 hoo! I wanna see too! See your faces sink into despair. <laughs> now then, open sesame! Behold, the world beyond the school wall! This is the outside world you've all been so anxious to claw your way back into. Dangerous. The world has grown so very dangerous. That's what this means. What are you talking about? None of this makes any sense! What? What am I looking at? This is a scene from a movie or something, right? What you just saw, all of you should recognize it. That world is locked away within the memories that were taken from you. If you can't remember, please just try. Do your best to try and recall. <laughs> Better kick your brain in the ass, because it's up to that gray lump whether you live or die. I don't remember. Ain't a fucking excuse no more, because now it's time for the final class. Bitches, remember or die! What the fuck happened outside? You want us to remember or whatever, but when it comes to that crazy, confusing video you showed us, I don't understand a damn thing! What's the meaning of the footage we saw? Is this another one of your practical jokes? I mean, you're telling us to remember, but what am I supposed to be remembering? 
Nobody can remember anything. This is the end for all of us. What other choice do we have? Come on, bitches! Remember or die! What the fuck happened? You want us to re when it comes to that creep? I don't understand. What's the meaning? Is this another one of I mean, what am I supposed to Nobody can remember it. No, it's wrong. Actually, she might remember. Who might remember? The other token. Genocide Jack. What? The two of them share certain kinds of knowledge. But their memories aren't linked, right? I see. If their memories are separate, then even if one personality is forgotten, there's a chance the other may still have those memories. What do you say, Toko? Are you telling me to swap places with her? No! Absolutely not! That'd be like forfeiting my entire identity! Toko, you're the only one we can rely on. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to have it answered immediately. Do you know anything about this video? Huh? What video? The video that's playing right now. Who the hell are you? Oh, um, I'm the mastermind. Oh, nice to meet you! Uh, nice to meet you, too. That's enough! Look at the stupid screen! Aye aye! Roger, you got it, Captain! Well, does it look familiar? I don't have all the details, but... Of course it does! Then you remember all the stuff it's showing? So you didn't lose your memory after all. Then why didn't you say something earlier? I only answer questions if someone bothers to ask me. I'm the quiet type, you know? Oh my god, she's the worst liar in the world. More importantly, if you really do remember, what is it? the question. What happened out there? Well, I can't really say if it happened or if it's still happening. But it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Why is that phrase coming up now? Because it's all because of that event. What is? Are you serious? I'm talking about the way the world is now is now the world's been destroyed get it destroyed explain yourself tell us everything you know copy that darling okay so this big awful tragic event they started just calling it the tragedy happened about a year ago it was so big and so bad that even this murderous fiend went pale at the sight of it I guess you could say what happened was man-made! But it was more on the level of a worldwide natural disaster! Either way, there's no doubt that it was the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history! And as a result, in basically no time flat! The world turned out the way it did, and that's that! That's all there is to it? Come on! There wasn't a single concrete description in there! Well, it just so happens I don't know any of the specifics! Miss Morose saw it all play out in real time, so why don't you ask her? 
We already did, and she didn't know anything. That's why we're asking you. Oh, I couldn't live up to Master's expectations! To die! To die! This is the true tragedy! Okay, okay, that's enough of your little lover's quarrel. Whatever happened, it doesn't matter at this exact point in time, right? The end justifies the means. Everything serves the outcome. In other words, the world has ended. That's the important thing. But how can the world just end? It's... it's the world! Calm down. It's okay. There's no need to panic. Every living person will be dead in a hundred years anyway. So the world ending isn't that big a deal. Oh, come on. Now you're just being ridiculous. Well, as long as we're being ridiculous, I have another ridiculous story to tell you. It's the story of the Tagami Corporation, which has given Byakuya's life all its meaning. What? What did you say? I'm glad to see you took the bait. You bit into it like a middle-aged secretary at an all-you-can-eat cake buffet. Correct! Well done, peasant! But I didn't say anything yet. I just got so fucking bored waiting, I couldn't help it! Even if you're wrong, eventually you'll figure it out, right? <laughs> Till then, you're just going in circles. So, no matter what you pick, you get the right answer! Pretty innovative, don't you think? But do you think it might be a disease? Getting bored so easy, I mean. Do you think I might be sick? Anyway, like I was saying, Byakuya's entire lineage has been totally annihilated. What? What the hell are you talking about? I can confirm that his entire family has died. Even the distant relatives. The Tagami name? has perished. Stop with these idiotic jokes! Stop! And said with such authority! A peasant would dare challenge us? The avatar of divine punishment? You must learn your place, peasant! You are no longer the ultimate affluent progeny! They, they couldn't possibly be gone! The Togami family is destined to guide the world! There is no world anymore, remember? It got fucked a full year ago! But hold on! That doesn't make any sense! Huh? I don't make sense? There's no way that happened a year ago! I mean, we only came to this school a few weeks ago! If some kind of world-ending event happened a year ago... Then how do you explain the totally normal world we were living in up till then? <laughs> Have you considered the possibility that you're mistaken about that? Mistaken? Well, if I'm understanding you right, it sounds like you think the tragedy happened a year before you arrived here. Well, well yeah. I mean, like he said, we just got here a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago? Ooh, I get it! You're saying that what happened two years ago actually happened more recently, right? Huh? Two years ago? Well, I mean, you guys all started attending Hope's Peak Academy two years ago. <laughs> what the hell is this chick trying to say? I understand why you'd have trouble accepting it, but in the end, you can't deny the truth. And the truth is, everything is cause and effect. Deny that, and you may as well give yourself up to God. So, you must surely understand all the hints I've given you so far, right? What are the memories I took from you? Now, answer us! Answer with all your heart and soul! How are we supposed to answer? I... 
I just don't know what's going on anymore. I got it! If we accept that what you say is true, then we've all lost our memories of the last two years after coming to this school. Nope. Nope. No, no, no. Nope. No. I mean, no matter what anyone says, uh-uh. Another correct answer. Well done, peasant. Seriously? This routine again? We've lost two years' worth of memories? That's right! You've already spent two full years here at Hope's Peak Academy! And that entire period of time is precisely what you've forgotten! I don't remember the last two years of my life? That... that's not possible! This is all just surreal. Plus, it felt freaking old. <laughs> Everyone's so good. Two years, I could never leave. We've been living here for hell no. I mean, I haven't got I've never even gone to a single. No, it's wrong. Hero, there's something I'd like you to take a look at. This notebook right here. Huh? Hey, why is my name written on it? I found it in the locker room on the second floor. If you don't mind, could you take a look inside? Sure, whatever you want. But I've never seen this notebook before in my life. Wizza, wizza, is something wrong? It's kind of similar. No, even more than that. This is absolutely my handwriting, without a doubt! But how is this... I don't remember ever writing in this thing! No! No way! It looks like you actually did attend class here at Hope's Peak. But somehow, you forgot all about it. Lies! It's all one big lie! I don't want to believe it either. But there's also no explanation for this pocketbook. And whose pocketbook is that? It's mine. And the handwriting inside is also mine. There's no doubt about it. But just like Hero, I have no memory of ever writing in it. And the reason for that is the two years of missing memories? <laughs> After seeing all the evidence, any choice but to acknowledge the truth? Isn't it just so desperately dark? The mystery's solved, but it's like a goddamn funeral in here! Shit, man! I've never been to a funeral! Hell yes! Two years of school life. How many moments of blossoming youth have you missed out on? How many fun classes? How many school events? This was your chance to build lasting friendships, right? And on top of that, something tragically sad happened one year ago. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. Right before everyone's eyes, the world came crashing down. You absorbed all that despair, but then you forgot it all. 
And once you've forgotten, you made the choice to subject yourself to this killing game. Oh, and there's one other thing. To be even more precise, the memories you all lost were... Actually, never mind. I'm bored. Explaining stuff is boring. What? We are bored of this world. Everyone always talks big, declaring all the great things they'll do. But then they always fizzle out. This world is just so desperately fucking boring! What are you talking about? In a way, I'm jealous of all of you. To give yourself over so completely to such stimulating despair? Yeah, so figure out the rest for yourselves! I'm sick of expositioning all this shit! Figure out what? Figure out where your memories come apart. That's at the heart of all of this. of this school and step foot in the main hall. When I passed out, I was overcome with a strange sensation. Wow, you still have enough spirit to keep on talking, huh? Um, so I don't know much about the details, but it seems like everyone remembers passing out, right? And your sense of time got all messed up because of the memory loss after? something like that after I passed out I woke up in a classroom with my head on a desk I assumed not much time had passed since I'd collapsed in the main hall <laughs> but instead two whole years had gone by the reason it felt so short was because our memories of the time in between have been completely removed? You got it, honey! Two years of memories? Poof! Gone! Which means, of course... When everyone met for the first time, it wasn't actually for the first time. Unaware of this fact, you took the time to introduce yourselves to each other, but... But by that point, We'd already spent two years together at the school. That's what those photos reveal, isn't it? <laughs> yep, that's what they reveal. You were all such close friends. You spent two years together, and then you started killing each other. And it was all so you could escape into a world that's already been enough. What a terribly tragic tale! Even if you left now, there's nothing you could do to fix it! You're the one who set things up to be like this! I love you all so much. What? Once your school life here began, I thought about you constantly. It's only natural that I would fall in love. So, since I love you guys so much, I'll tell you all about it! All about the idea we came up with as the ultimate despair! Our plan to bring despair to all mankind! Let's go back in time, two years, okay? Back to when everyone first came to this school. School life during that first year overflowed with hope and happiness. Oh boy, it was just the worst! Everyone was enjoying themselves so much! You were all having the time of your lives! But that couldn't last forever, of course. The peacefulness only made it through that first year.
Because after that, an event unfolded that hammered a soul-crushing despair into all of humanity. The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. All too soon, the world's days of peace came to a bloody end. And as you can imagine, the school was no exception. The tragedy even made its way here, leading to the extermination of most of the students. What are you? Hmm? What do you mean? The most tragic event in human history, and the ultimate despair that caused it. I can't believe it's all because of just you and Mukuro. Was it some kind of organization? An angry mob? An incredibly motivated family? You have a point. If I had to describe it, I'd say... It was none of those. How can I put it? It was more of an ideological thing. Despair is contagious, you know. It's almost like a natural phenomenon. Everyone is capable of it. And now the entire world has fallen into despair. In other words, if you see despair as the enemy, then your enemy is the world itself. I just don't understand why. We didn't ask you to try to understand. This was a tangent anyway, unrelated to the matter at hand. Okay, so let's get back to the story. Hope's Peak had taken so much damage. You guys were the only survivors. The members of the 78th class of Hope's Peak Academy were the only ones left. And then, something super neat happened! Now pay attention, cause this is important, and I'm only gonna say it once! So guess what? To protect everyone who had survived, Hope's Peak was transformed into a shelter! That's right! It was transformed into a shelter! Ah, I said it twice! Now, someone was responsible for that transformation, for creating what would eventually become your prison. Do any of you know who that might have been? I got it! It could only have been the headmaster of Hope Peak Academy. He wanted to turn the school into a shelter to try and protect us. To protect us from the despair and tragedy taking place outside. That's why he asked us to make that promise. To say that we were willing to live in this school forever. We believe he had something like that in mind, yes. If you, the collective hope of a new generation, could survive, maybe the world could have a fresh start. Yeah, the headmaster put that much faith in you. And because we had that same hope, That's why we all agree to live here forever. But creating the shelter was also his single biggest mistake. <laughs> it's laughable, really. He was the headmaster, but he had no idea. He had no idea that we, the ultimate despair, had already made our way into the school. So what was supposed to be a shelter to keep you safe became a cage that made it impossible for you to escape despair. <laughs> I have to say, it really helped me out a lot. It saved me a ton of time. By the way, it was you yourselves who blocked off the windows, the doors, all the exits. Under the Headmaster's direction, you all went about your work like obedient little sheep. You mean... you trapped ourselves in here? And then you forgot all about it, and started bitching about how you were trapped in here! Once you'd finished building your little shelter, it was time for me and Mukuro to get to work!
Ray and Nicola had come here, spending the last two years waiting for that moment. That moment where you all began killing each other served as the climax of our global despair plan. And the only reason you survived the tragedy was so that you could be a part of it. You let us live? So we could go around killing each other? Is that what you're saying? Why? Why would you do that? Because this was so much more than a simple high school death match. Rather, it was a method to hunt down and destroy every last remaining speck of hope in the world. What are you saying? Well, it would seem that there's a little bit left out there. A few souls unwilling to give up hope. So I thought I should show them, which is why I... <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? about you hijacking the airwaves, aren't you? Uh-huh. That's exactly what I'm talking about. To show the world the murders taking place at this school, which was meant to be a symbol of hope. That was the whole point of the ultimate despair! When I said climax, that was what I was talking about! The world watched as you fell into despair! 
and began to kill each other one after another. Despair is as contagious as any disease. Any hope left turns to despair. <laughs> Isn't the power of television just amazing? By the way, since we started broadcasting, a whole bunch of people have tried to come and rescue you. Uh, are you serious? But utilizing the heavy weaponry I installed around the school grounds, I had no problem expelling them. Expelled them? I have to thank you all. They were a relentless bunch, refusing to give up on hope and trying to force their beliefs on the world. But in the end, I was able to give them the final despair. Death. So you just used us? To bring despair to everyone in the outside world? Well, sure, but I also gave you a second chance at life, right? So it's like, give and take. Give and take? You're so full of shit! And there's a reason I chose you guys to survive when all the other students were dropping like flies. I mean, we built up two years of memories together. You were all my treasured classmates. Sorry, that's a lie. I just figured you'd despair even more when you found out a friend had betrayed you. And that's the truth. Which is what you wanted, right? So, does it make you feel utterly lost and hopeless? You solved the mystery, but despair at the truth, right? Don't tell me. Did you seriously count on the possibility that we would solve your mystery? And if we did, then what? Our final desire for creating this world of despair was so we could experience one last class trial. If you were bold enough to solve the mystery, only to discover that the truth was utterly hopeless, how would you react? What would you do? See? Discovering the truth doesn't necessarily lead to a sense of hope. Truth can be full of despair, too! Like right fucking now! Not to mention... All those motives I talked about were totally meaningless. I mean, with the world having ended and all. Meaningless? Then we've been murdering each other? For nothing? And think about it. You chose to lock yourselves up here, then started murdering each other to get out. We weren't just random strangers either. We were classmates. We'd spent two years together. <laughs> no, even I can't laugh at that. We get it. We get it, okay? You're totally awesome, right? We get it already. So help us! I'll do anything! Just help me! A peasant begging for his life? Oh, how delightful! We've never witnessed such a travesty firsthand. But I'm sorry to say doesn't work on me. All I want is despair, and there's no reason for it. And since there's no reason, there's no argument against it. There's just no understanding it. No argument, no understanding. What better definition of ultimate despair could there be? Wait, hold on. You've just been going on about whatever you feel like. But there's no real reason for us to believe anything you have to say! Huh? You say the world's fallen apart, but I haven't seen it for myself. So I don't acknowledge it. I don't accept it as the truth! Until you see it with your own eyes, truth and falsehood overlap one another. In other words, you're not unlike Schrodinger's cat right now. Is that what you're saying? If so, what then? Are you saying you won't accept the truth until you can go outside and see for yourself? Well, you better not! You go out into that world and you're all gunners for sure! Trust me, I'm not lying about any of this! Well, even if it's all true, I refuse to give in! I refuse to lose to you! 
for the sake of everyone you've killed. Huh? Everyone I've killed? What are you talking about? You're the ones who killed them! I didn't kill anyone. I simply gave you a little nudge in the right direction. And that's all it took for you to start killing each other. You're nothing but bloodthirsty animals. That's why anyone was murdered here, peasant. Say what you want about hope, but we're all creatures of instinct, right? Despair comes naturally. Oh yes! <laughs> That's funny as shit! No! This isn't just some game to us. It's murder, plain and simple. You stole our memories, invented reasons for us to do it. You pushed us all into a corner. It's all your fault! You certainly have a talent for crossing the buck, don't you? That must be your hope, huh? But we don't have much time left to keep up this banter. We have to draw things to a close soon. What do you mean? I'm talking about the vote, of course! You didn't forget about that little rule, did ya? Oh, and also, since this will be the last vote, decided to change the rules! What? You guys so full of hope, and me so full of despair. I've decided to have you vote which one will be punished. If even one of you votes to punish hope, well then, I'll consider that a win for me, and punish everyone on the side of hope. It's just one person? Oh, but don't worry. I won't be voting, of course. Even if you don't, you still got the upper hand in all this. It's okay. Nobody would actually vote to kill themselves, right? Oh, let me just mention one more thing. When I win to punish you guys, you'll have to stay here till you grow old and die. No fighting, no killing. That's your punishment. You mean, we just... We'd have to just... live here? She's saying she'll let us live! If you're not happy with that, then go ahead and punish me. And make your way to the outside world. Enter a world fallen from grace, where only despair exists. Where you'd likely be dead within a day. What are you saying? So no matter what, we're doomed! Wait a sec! I just got hit with an inspiration bomb! Dying of old age is boring as shit, right? The audience at home isn't gonna dig that at all! So, here's what'll happen. One of you will get to experience an instant, super impressive punishment! What? You... you can't just... Do you mean to say... you'll execute one of us? And I get to decide. Who's gonna have to suck it down? Makoto, you're up! Me? Yeah, you've been acting up, causing all kinds of trouble. I hate you! So let me make this clear. Everyone has two choices in front of them. If a single person votes for hope to be punished, then only Makoto will receive a harsh punishment, and the rest of you will live here in peace. On the other hand, you desire to see us punished, then you must all leave this place. I will force you out, ensuring you all die horrible deaths in the outside world. What I'm saying is, if you sacrifice Makoto, the rest of you will get to live out your lives. What? Has your resolve softened? Have you lost confidence? Are you afraid of being punished? Don't you have faith in your friends? No! That's not it! It's okay. You're right to be afraid. It would seem all of those around you have realized the futility of going against me. Faces eroded by despair have come together as one. Besides, Yoko, 
You could never betray your father, could you? What? I mean, the Headmaster's only wish was that all of you would survive, right? That's why he tried to trap you all here, after all. The least you can do is try to honor your dead father's wishes. <laughs> Kyoko! One person's despair is enough to seal your fate! Isn't that just the most hopeless outcome ever? So, who do you think's gonna give in? Whose despair is gonna sign your death warrant? No one. Nobody's gonna give in to despair! We're not gonna lose to you! So boring. Stubborn till the very end, huh? Well, that's fine. Then let's just hurry up and get it over with. It's time for the final vote. Everything will come to an end. Your stupid hope. And your stupid life! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die... That would be the end of Hope's Peak Academy. <laughs> By the way, the air outside is totally polluted, you know. The only reason we're okay in here is thanks to the air purifiers in the physics lab. If I die, the purifiers will screech to a halt. In other words, as soon as I die, the communal life you've all been living will come to an end. All of you will have to leave. You'll have to go into the world outside, where only death and despair are waiting. So, what are you gonna do? Will you just die? Is that what you want? Give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end of Hope's Gift of <laughs> Don't lose hope now! All my fortune telling senses are telling me not to leave this place! <laughs> but to live! It's moving forward, right? So even if it's hard, even if we're scared, we don't have any choice, do we? I want to keep on living. I want to open the next door. There must be something new waiting for me! So that's why. That's why! No matter what, I need to get out of here! The whole fortune-telling thing doesn't matter anymore! What matters is my own gut feelings! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. I decided- By the way, the, end. the only reason is thanks to the end. Don't lose hope now! I've been thinking about all this. And I was thinking, at a time like this, what would Sakura do? You only get stronger by taking adversity by the horns. Confront that thorny path with enthusiasm. That sounds like something she'd say, right? No. I think that's definitely what she'd say. 
Which is why I... I... Yeah! I've made up my mind! We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to dump, that would be the end. I decide By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the it Say whatever you want if I die. In other words, the communal life you've all... Me! Don't lose hope now! <laughs> I don't care either way. I'm fine with whichever one is more interesting. Actually, I may not look like it, but I always hated school. So, no matter how I look, still hate it. <laughs> oh, but no matter what, Master has to come along with us. We won't give up. As long as there's hope. We'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. The By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the if say whatever you want if I die. In other words, the communal life you've all- I can keep on living! All of you will have to go, have to go into the world outside. Don't lose hope now! What's the matter? You're not actually trying to encourage me, are you? Ridiculous. It never even crossed my mind that I might give in to despair. But don't misunderstand me. I couldn't care in the slightest what happens to you. I just have to keep my word. I swore I would end the life of the Mastermind. Besides, the Togami family isn't dead, because I'm still alive. So until I can restore the Togami family and bring it greater glory than it's ever known. We won't give up! As long as there's hope, we'll never give up! If I were to die, that would be the end. Uh, the By the way, the, the only reason is thanks to the if say whatever you want if I die. In other words, the communal life you've all- I can keep on living! All of you will have to go have to go into the world outside. I already said I would claim the mess. So, what are you going to just stop? Don't lose hope now! I didn't really know my father, so I can't pretend to know what he was thinking. But even if we're just connected by blood, there's one thing I am sure of. He would never want us to abandon Makoto and choose to stay here. I can't explain why exactly. But if I'm sure of anything, I'm sure of that. Just because we don't actually know anything. Does that mean we can't understand?
Bowl. Could it be that... No, never mind. So, Makoto, I don't think you wound up at this school because you had good luck or bad luck. I think you came here for a different reason entirely. You came here to bring down the ultimate despair. You came here to confront despair without ever giving up. And if that's true, I think we could call you the ultimate hope. What do you think? To hope keeps on going. I refuse to give up. I refuse to get bored. I refuse to throw it all away. I refuse to despair. Because all I have going for me is the desire to keep moving forward. What's going on? What's happening? like we've reached the end. I think it may be time to vote. We just gotta pull the lever, right? Good! I'm ready to go! <laughs> Let's put an end to these trials. Put an end to the killing. With our own hands. Well, that's 
just totally the best. So this is despair. And now I true despair. And now I true despair. Huh? Anyway... <laughs> totally the best! Not possible. Don't make me repeat myself. Okay... <laughs> hey... However... <laughs> There's one last thing. Death feels. Oh, it's so wonderful. Even a tenth of this despair. Even a hundredth. I want every last soul on this planet to taste such despair. I want the entire world to die with that despair in its mouth. Okay, let's do this. I've reserved an extra special punishment for last. Let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time!
Hey. Makoto. So, I... Indeed. If, on the other hand, you... I will force you out. In... In other words... But... It's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, um... That's enough. Anyway... But... <sighs> For serious? In other words... Am I wrong? You got it! Hey! Okay! Huh? Hmm... Could it be... How about that? Woo! <gasps> Makoto. Guess this is goodbye. And goodbye to Sakura. But hey, if we gotta say goodbye, we may as well do it with a smile on our face. Hey guys! You guys want your fortunes told anywhere, anytime. You just let me know. I'll be there. You know how much I hate being annoyed. But if something does come up, you may as well let me know. I can't guarantee I'll actually bother listening, but... You know. I don't know why, but I have a burning desire to start writing. I might be able to pull it off. A story about Master and me, and the others, I guess. I can't say I'm sorry about what happened, but still, it does feel kind of strange. I really don't know what to say. I guess we graduated?
Interesting. Things are getting very interesting indeed. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma. And I am your... I am this school's... Headman. Dangle <laughs> Hey! Can you hear me? Are you okay? You seem pretty out of it. 
To be honest, I'm also... No, everyone else feels the same too. since we suddenly got put in this weird situation. Hey, are you listening?
I'm not so special that I have to introduce myself. And formalities are always a little embarrassing. Well, this is what's expected. I guess that's how I should think about it. My name is Hajime Hinata. There's only one reason I came to Hope's Peak Academy. Because I admired Hope's Peak Academy. To me, attending Hope's Peak Academy is like being a celebrity or a superhero. In fact, instead of calling it admiration, it's more like it's always been a dream of mine. That's why, to feel like a member of society, to become someone I can be proud of, I always wanted to... goes there uh. um are you feeling all right you look quite pale uh, um hey could you be you're also a freshman at this school right uh then you're all see for yourself we're all freshmen too Freshmen like us have been gathered in this classroom. I see. Very strange. What's going on? Hey! So in other words... <laughs> Naturally. Huh? 
So in other words, So what I mean is... What's that mean? Impossible! Hey, bastard! Hmm. Huh? Um... Perhaps... Hello! What is that? Um, it looks like a stuffed animal. That's right! I am a squeezably soft stuffed animal! Magical Miracle Girl Usami! A.K.A. Usami! I may not look like it, but I am your squeezably soft teacher! Nice to meet you all! Huh? What's going on? Huh? Huh? 
pass this. Hey, can you hear me? Are you okay? You seem pretty out of it. To be honest, I'm also... No, everyone else feels the same too. Since we suddenly got put in this weird situation. 
Hey, are you listening? Hey. You're right. That's not it. <laughs> hey. I'm Nagito Komaeda. Nice to meet you. What happened?
Are you okay? Actually...
Not it. Bye. 
Kazuichi Soda. I'm the ultimate mechanic. Nice to meet ya. now. But... That's right!
Fuyuhiko Kuzuryu. Just so we're clear, I don't plan to act friendly and shit with you guys. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. I'm Mahiru Koizumi. I'll be counting on you from now on. Actually...
but... Oh, my, my! <laughs> Guitar! your business. Understood. My name is Peko Pekoyama. It is nice to Appears. <sighs> yes. Genres. Nice to meet you. Yep. <laughs> well, My name is Teru Teru Hanamura. On the streets, I'm known as the ultimate cook. But could you guys call me the ultimate chef instead? It has more of a big city flavor to it, you know? <laughs> I am sorry! My 
name is Sonia Nevermind. Guess that's about it. Understand? Hajime.
My name is Byakuya Togami. <laughs> Actually... How admirable. Finished collecting the hope fragments. I'm... I'm so happy! So, I've prepared a present for everyone that'll make you all very happy. I apologize for the trouble, but please gather at the beach. <laughs> May Shining Hope be with you all. What to do? But... possible. Huh? Such ignorance. Show 
some spit. What? Are you stupid? <laughs> I won't let you. Got it? That's enough.
Not possible. That's enough. <laughs> what? Suntan lotion from the supermarket. Would anyone like a rub down? Oh, you're quite considerate. Now then, will you apply it right away? Okay. Rubbing lotion on a muscular man. All right, no problem. My tastes are pretty open, you know. You seem a little too open, like you're covering too many bases by yourself. <laughs> I'll make sure to slather you with lots and lots of oil. What is this feeling of intense bloodlust?
Flawless victory! First of all, you're too plain. White rabbits are far too plain. So, I'm gonna make you in my image. <laughs> this is what happens when you defy me. I'll crunch ya. I'll bite ya. I'll rip you apart. <laughs> Stop it! Hey, hold still! This wooden stick isn't gonna shove itself. In, you know? No! That's a no-no! That's a big no-no! Ta-da! All done! What? What is this? No! What's this?
Hey, hey. Huh? Did you say? Damn it! What's going on? Damn it! This is. Huh? Anyway. <laughs> hey! Thank you for waiting. Do your. You're kidding. I won't forgive you. Such a dumb. <laughs> Allow me to explain. <laughs> what are you saying? Well, are you kidding me? No way, no way, no. No. Sort of spine tingling punishments will we see? I can't help it. I'm already getting excited. There may even be some unique punishments, like impaling you through the head with a thigamajig claw. Tell me. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't like. 
like this. Everyone! I can't lose! Ah. Let's go! It's punish! up as fish food, you better not disobey me! Just so you know, I don't feel mercy or sympathy. Cause I'm a bear after all! An excuse like, I got high off this tropical atmosphere, won't work on me at all! possible. Then... Ourselves. Being brought to a tropical island with complete strangers in order to kill each other to escape. That creates fear in our minds, and the desire to escape that hopeless fear is our worst enemy.
Dein Geimlopper.
Place my only home. 